the biggest cost to any salmon farmer in the world is uh, dealing with disease, particularly sea lice. And 22 to 25 percent of monthly costs of running a salmon farm is dealing with disease. Sea lice are, uh, are evident in our oceans, and they do little harm or have little impact on wild fish. But when you have thousands of salmon trapped in a cage, they're, they're a target. They're a target for sea lice. And the ways of dealing with eradicating sea lice are toxic. And if you look at the chemical kind of uh, solutions they have to combat sea lice, they will bring in a whale boat, put 10,000 fish in the well of the boat, pour the chemicals in, they burn basically the skin off with the sea lice, but these chemicals that kill the sea lice, they also disappear in the environment. And it happened that in Chesapeake Bay in Canada, these chemicals came in the environment and killed the whole lobster population because sea lice are crustaceans, which is a group that contains crabs, lobsters, shrimp, but also sea lice. And it caused a major problem. A lot of farms are plagued with it. I mean, farms up here in Donegal, they reported 44 sea lice per fish, and they eat basically through the skin of the fish. It's a really nasty kind of thing. The fish get very low in energy, the immune system is compromised, some die, uh, not good. Now, with the seaweed ingredients, specific species that we have tested in Norway, we know we can reduce the sea lice up to 80%, and our farms in Canada that use our product, they have no sea lice, because they're on the program now for two years. We engaged in 22-month trials in Scotland, where we fed thousands and thousands of young fish on a diet of fish, oil, and ocean feed, and in another set of cages, thousands of fish on a conventional diet that had all of the usual ingredients. We sat in a meeting with one of the largest salmon companies in the world, and the lead guy turned around to Stefan and he said, Stefan, at the next examination of the fish, what is it you want to see? And we were about five months into the trial at this point. Stefan said, well, there's a lot of things I want to look at, but I want to see how the pigmentation is going, how, instead of using a chemical, but from a, a natural seaweed, how the fish are becoming more pink. And this head of the, one of the largest salmon companies in the world kind of threw his pencil on the table and said, Stefan, forget it. That's impossible. If you're looking to see pigmentation in a salmon at uh, you know, 500 grams, it doesn't happen, okay? So we can forget that. But a week later, we had one of our people at the site, and he got a call because um, a seal had, had got into one of the pens and was eating the fish. Well, when our guy arrived, there was a whole bunch of dead salmon lying on the top of the water, and they scooped them out, and all of the fish were pink. And now they're really looking at us. So that was a definitive point for Stefan. He was right. the results back. We had the salmon in our hands, seven tons in total. Part of that we smoked, part of that we filleted, sent it out to the chefs and the Michelin star restaurants. The overwhelming response was that 92% where these salmon were going to, they wanted it straight away. They said the quality is the same as wild salmon. It's a natural solution. Yeah, I mean, it's not a silver bullet, but you can reduce sea lice populations with at least 40% up to, as we demonstrated in Norway, 80% and in Canada, 100%. What I'm selling still is the idea that seaweed have something that can work. I'm more an educator than anything else. And that is not easy. Uh, and you really have to almost give people the product to experience themselves that it works and then they convert it for the rest of their life. But to, to break through that wall, that's hard.